Kepler-138b is a planet with a mass around 0.08 times that of Earth and with a diameter around 0.64 times that of Earth, so similar to Mars. This sized mass means that its density is only 1.7 grams per centimeter cubic, so it is certainly not mostly rocky. Its density is much more in line with the water ice rich moons and non terrestrial, gas filled planets of the solar system. This planet is very close to the red dwarf star that it is orbiting, which is half the diameter and mass of the Sun. Because of the very close orbital distance, the surface temperature estimate is placed at around 180 degrees Celsius, implying that it certainly lacks a hydrogen and helium envelope which the non-terrestrial planets of the solar system all have. The reason this planet lacks such an envelope is because the high temperature and low surface gravity means that the light hydrogen and helium can escape relatively quickly, probably in just a few million years. Considering that this planet is 1 to 2.7 billion years old, then the implications about the lack of hydrogen and helium are clear. Even massive orbital changes after the formation won't allow for such an envelope considering the relatively fast rate of escape. Despite lacking hydrogen and helium, considering that its density is also very similar to the major icy moons in the solar system, that also means that, like them, it is very rich in water. Typically, the moons in the solar system are about 50% water and 50% rock, with most of the water typically forming the top layer. Titania, for example, has this composition and it is about as dense as this planet. So then the water ice rich composition and the high temperature of this planet implies that it has a puffy and likely extremely extended water vapor atmosphere. It doesn't leave the surface nearly as easily compared to gas, hydrogen and helium because water vapor is much heavier. Whether or not we can call it a gas dwarf entirely depends on what definition of a gas dwarf we are using. However, it's very clear that it does lead into the territory of being one considering the likely existence of a massive, puffy water vapor atmosphere. It could also have a massive water ocean many hundreds of kilometers deep. The reason that that could be the case, despite temperatures being above 100 degrees Celsius, is due to the fact that at a sufficiently high atmospheric pressure, water is in a liquid state well above 100 degrees Celsius. So this could be an oceanic planet with an extremely deep ocean. Although if we say that a liquid layer excludes it from being a gas dwarf, then that would also exclude Jupiter and Saturn from being gas giants, as below a certain point, the atmospheric pressure is so great that the hydrogen and helium acts like a fluid. So there is basically an ocean on them as well. Two other planets in this Kepler-138 system, C and D, are also potentially oceanic gas dwarfs. They are twins. Both of them are around 1.5 times the diameter of Earth, with a mass around 2 times greater than Earth. Although their density is very similar to that of Mars, for planets of that size, it is supposed to be much greater if they are fully rocky. So that means that they are not fully rocky, but instead have water take up about 50% of their volume. And the liquid water mantle layer is placed at being around 2000 kilometers long. Although both of these planets are further away from the host star than the B planet, and have a stronger surface gravity, they are still hot enough such that we can expect that they don't primarily have hydrogen and helium in their atmospheres, especially since they are between 1 and 2.7 billion years old, more than enough time for hydrogen and helium to leave even if there are some orbital changes. So how did these three oceanic gas dwarf planets form? One possibility is that at one point they formed in the more distant regions, further away from the red dwarf star where they accumulated solid water or possibly solidified at that distance. That's why in the frigid regions of the solar system, the moons in those regions are typically 50% just water, while the inner planets are almost fully rocky. So interestingly, Kepler-138 planets have a similar composition in bulk to that of icy moons in the solar system. There is also another way for how these planets got so much water. 
so shortly after they formed, due to the immense heat, there could have been an iron oxide magma ocean on their surfaces that then reacted with hydrogen that was present in the nebula, and that could form water, although the indications are that this likely cannot account for how much water is currently present on these planets. One important thing to note for all of these planets is that the density estimate mentioned is coming from the latest study on them. The previous two studies that estimated their density showed quite a large difference. However, all of them still imply the existence of water on their surfaces. So the existence of a water vapor envelope on them is likely, especially for the C and D planet. There is also a fourth planet present in this system for which the diameter isn't determined, but its mass is, and it is about half that of Earth, making it third in terms of mass and with that probably size in the system. It is also likely the coldest one as it is the most distant from the host red dwarf star. The surface temperature is probably somewhere around 19 degrees Celsius. One interesting thing about planets between the size of Earth and Neptune is that they are one of the most common types of planets. They are so common that even a system was found which has six of them, all between 1.9 and 2.9 times the diameter of Earth. I'm talking about HD 110067 system. The star of the system is just a bit cooler and smaller than the Sun. However, even the most distant sub-Neptune found in this system is closer to the host star than Mercury is to the Sun. So all of these planets have very hot surfaces. They also all have densities which indicate the presence of immense gas atmospheres. However, considering the temperatures, hydrogen and helium could mostly be gone with potentially the most distant planet of the system having the greatest amount, but probably not a whole lot. Still, the density then implies that they likely have extremely thick and extended water vapor atmospheres. So all of the gas dwarfs showcased so far in this video aren't composed out of the same gases that solar systems, non-terrestrial planets are. So if we really want to stick to the definition, which only counts gas giants and gas dwarfs through having a hydrogen and helium envelope, then for that we actually don't have good examples that are a lot smaller compared to Neptune. At least we don't with a good degree of certainty. One thing that is similar among all of solar system's non-terrestrial planets is that they are quite cold. In cold regions, it is much easier for hydrogen and helium gas planets to form and stay that way because the atmospheric escape is insignificant due to the low temperatures. So taking that into account, one way to increase the likelihood that we are looking at a mini-Neptune with a true hydrogen and helium-rich envelope is by simply taking into account the size, density, and also temperature. Specifically, we should look for planets that are very far away from the host star, at least far away such that the temperatures are at least as frigid as on Jupiter. However, according to the NASA Exoplanet Archive, there is only one planet that we know the density of that also has an estimated equilibrium temperature that is below the freezing point of water and which is also in the size range of mini Neptunes. That is LHS 1140b, although its density is only just a bit greater than that of Earth, considering that its diameter is 1.7 times that of Earth, that is far too low for a planet of that size that is fully rocky, so that could then mean that it is engulfed with helium and hydrogen gas, but it also has a solid surface deep beneath the immense envelope layer, so it is possibly somewhere in between a terrestrial and gas planet. However, then again that relatively low density could be just due to the presence of a truly enormous water ocean and water vapor atmosphere, and of course it could be some combination of both. Now the reason that this planet could, to some degree, have hydrogen and helium in the atmosphere would be due to the fact that its equilibrium temperature is estimated to be around minus 50 degrees Celsius. This is uniquely low out of the potential mini-Neptunes found, and could be enough to keep some hydrogen and helium given the size and mass of the planet. However, its real temperature could be a lot different. Equilibrium temperatures are an estimate 
of how much a planet is receiving heating from the star that it is orbiting, while excluding any atmospheric effects and differences in surface reflectivity. That can be estimated by knowing the size and temperature of a star, while also knowing the orbital distance of a planet. Because equilibrium temperatures don't take into account the atmosphere and exact surface reflectivity, they are also typically different from the real temperatures of planets. However, it still does correlate to a large extent. For example, in the solar system, although all equilibrium temperatures are different from the actual surface temperature of planets, they are typically around the actual temperature. The only significant outlier is Venus, which has an equilibrium temperature of minus 13 degrees Celsius, while the actual surface temperature is around 400 degrees Celsius. And that is because it has a huge amount of carbon dioxide, which traps heat. Earth, on the other hand, has an equilibrium temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius, while the actual average surface temperature is about 15 degrees Celsius, not too far off from the equilibrium temperature. And such is the case for pretty much all of solar system's major planets. It is also very important to note that all of the temperatures of exoplanets in this video are just equilibrium temperatures. Although we can currently pretty easily tell apart a primarily rocky exoplanet from one that contains lots of water, or hydrogen and helium, telling apart different types of gas and gulf planets is a lot more tricky. However, there are still indications which allow us to some degree to narrow down the composition. In terms of impressively small gas dwarfs that contain hydrogen and helium, we don't really know how small they can get. However, in terms of gas dwarfs that have puffy water vapor atmospheres, they can get truly impressively small, as shown with Kepler-138 system.